Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Summit 2021. I am Atlas. This is the final day for this week of games. It's been very, very strange. I have Chronicler here with me to go through what has been the beginning of one of the oddest seasons that we've had. I don't know whether we have a, uh, a standings graphic to show you guys right now. We might. This is certainly a test for our producer who's probably scrambling looking for a graphic. But it is absolutely ridiculous. Currently at the moment, DRX, Humble Life and T1 are our bottom three. Not in that order. It's in fact the opposite order. Here we are. Look at this. Isn't it insane? T1 8th. Humble Life Esports 9th. DRX 10th. These were one of our, these, some of our top teams at the beginning of spring. There is so much weirdness going on here. Uh, I think you point out the immediate, like, what? If you just watch <laughs> yeah. spring and you come in and you're like, wait, hold up. All, all three of these teams are there? Uh, that's a big surprise. But then you look at the other side, it seems like a freak out, like Nongshim, like Fred Abrion, looking better than they have in a while, fortunately, top of the standings. It's, it's Gen G and the Dumbun Kia. Everything is okay up there. Yeah, thankfully for Gen G fans especially, <laughs> uh, we've we've yet to hit the fall. Whether we will is going to be the big question moving forward. But let's have a look at our first match. It is going to be DRX versus T1. This is desperation mode for T1. T1 really need to get out of their slump by taking down definitely our lowest place team in the LCK right now. DRX have been struggling, haven't been able to string a win together to save themselves. They've won two games so far in the LCK, once on blue, once on red, so that's nice, but uh, otherwise it's been uh, all downhill. And whereas for T1 we still see glimpses of what this team can bring, right? The individual talent, the bot lane duo comes to mind, because Carrier, he's not left this form, that's not the problem. Nope. It doesn't even feel like it's uh, it's individual performances, it's just T1 as a whole, they look like loose and the moment they get out of the laning phase, team fights go horribly, macro calls seem to be all over the place, and in of itself, that is something that needs to be fixed. And a win against DRX here is, at this point, I think for T1, basically a necessity. And you're looking yeah. for a comfortable one as well. Yeah, this is the thing. It's not like, I don't know, there are a lot of ways to describe a game like this. Like some people would be like, do or die, blah, blah, blah. That's not what this is. That is a loss against DRX for T1 would be unacceptable. That's what it's come That's down to. That's terrifying. It is absolutely terrifying because DRX hasn't changed. This is the same roster that was able to pull out so many miraculous victories in the spring season to really get themselves towards the top of the table. Yes, playoffs didn't really work out for them and their flaws were kind of put on display. However, it wasn't this bad for DRX oh. in any stretch, right? And uh, you can see it's reflected in the team stats as well. DRX really, it's, uh, it's not coming together here. 10th, 10th, 9th, 10th, it's just not great. And normally that Gold at, at 30s, where you'd see the start of the upswing, right, for, for uh, DRX in the last split. The problem is, though, and this is something that T1 is suffering from a little bit as well, is that T1 gets, you need to play well for the early game, and generally they do. If we see here the gold at uh, 10, gold at 20 stays stable, but you can't just sit, wait till 30 minutes, and then somehow win the game anymore. And that's what DRX really relied on last split. That's yeah. style of play in the current meta is just not sufficient. And I think that's one of the reasons why DRX have struggled so much, whereas teams like Sandbox and Afrika have really found their groove. Yeah, they have uh, really got into it. Let's introduce DRX into LOL Park now. No roster changes or anything like that, as you can see. And, you know, things have just been not going so well. Uh, here in the LCK, absolutely not. Even in solo queue, things aren't going great, you know? It's just, uh, it's been a little bit of a rough time here. We'll see whether they can bounce back. Remember, this is only round one. We still have a week and a half left after today of round one as well. It is a double round robin. And that means that even if you are halfway through, there is a way to turn everything around if you're able to, you know, get some revenge against all the teams that took you down. And uh, here we go, T1. Making their way onto the stage. No changes here either. I think there have been some questions as to, you know, are we going to see maybe a switch up when it comes to the top side of the map or something like that. But I think, as you saw with that last man on your screen, the bottom lane has not been in contention whatsoever. There's been one man guaranteed on T1 to be trying his darndest, and it has been Carrier. And even with the really uh, lackluster split that T1 has had so far, I think. And then we talk about him a lot, you know, Carrier. Yeah. Uh, but it, it has to be said, still think that this is one of our players who 
in the league as a whole is looking like one of the best, right? Like up there with the showmakers, with the canyons who even post roll swap have somehow been able to get yeah. a lot of work done. And I think that for T1, I want to see them not only get those early laning advantages that they've been pretty good at getting, but turn them into something. And it's so weird that it's T1 that we're like giving this criticism because this didn't really used to be a problem. It was more the other way around, where like the laning phase was kind of lackluster, but then team fights and macro calls were amazing. Yeah. Whereas for DRX, I I'm still looking for what is the identity of this team now that the meta has shifted? Who are they going to play through? How are they going to play together? And what can they get done? Yep. Uh, here on the side of T1, as we mentioned, no changes when it comes to the roster, but I think the main change needs to come in the mindset and in the confidence as well, because this is a team that even represented in the stats, right? We don't want to go too heavily when it comes to stats because, of course, you know, there are a lot of factors that do make up for that. And when you're losing, your stats don't look good. Um, as you can see here, you know, we know Teddy, pretty good player, but there are not exactly the greatest of stats over here. Kill participation certainly up there, but when you are not uh, finding too many wins and, of course, having pretty slow early games, the AD carry getting a lot more of that uh, kill participation certainly does make some sense. But XP difference being very high just shows that uh, Teddy's still able to uh, to get things done, but also means that Carrier hasn't spent a lot of time in his lane. It feels to me like not only does Carrier spend a lot of time outside of Teddy's lane, but Teddy is also the one generally that gets just kind of, Teddy, you go stay in the bot lane and just go from there, right? Like we'll try and maybe poke at Harold but they don't actually take it. And even if they do, it doesn't snowball. And uh, I've talked a lot about the volatility of the current meta. I think that you need to have a consistent early game, which that part for T1 honestly has not been the big problem. It's as you pointed out, the confidence. Where is the confidence that the team has shown us? Because we know these players are incredible, but then the moment they get out of the laning phase, it feels like they're always just perpetually waiting, uh, waiting for an opening that doesn't come. And T1, you're good enough. You can create these openings yourself. You don't have to wait on your opponent to make a big mistake. Yep. As uh, some DRX fans, we need to certainly stop the losing. That is absolutely true. The T1 <laughs> take my energy. Oh god, the desperation. I like that the uh, little scarf down there as well. Oh, okay, if I it's really good. Don't mind it at all. But uh, I think uh, like this is this is some serious copium for like all of the fans of both of these teams right now. We're looking at Full desperation mode, trying to get that win on the board. Yes, T1 have found some success. DRX, on the other hand, have found absolutely none. And I, I imagine it means a lot for CV Max as well. It's like he comes back and then the team starts performing way worse than they did the previous season. So hoping for a bounce back there. And uh, we'll see what happens as we get into the draft. And I expect to see a lot of the usual uh, suspects here. Think about the Akali, the set, Lee Sin as it gets taken away, that the Nocturne. Um, probably gonna leave the Rumble and or the Diana open. Generally teams are fine just kind of letting those be. As the one time where DRX actually looked pretty decent was of the back of Piyoshi getting a good Zin yep. Zhao game in. So even though I don't think that um, Zin is necessarily the very best. He's still up there with the top tier junglers as that is setting up for a Rumble first pick here with that Karma Ben. Um, ST1, a couple of options. You can kind of let them have that and then go pick up the set yourself if you choose to not ban it away. Lucian's still open as well. Vera's still available. Akali's still there. There's certainly yep. a lot of uh, power picks. And when you ban, well, Akali's going to go because she's just not allowed to be involved no. in League of Legends these days. But now, it is certainly a, a lot of very, very strong options and only two ban slots available. So we'll see what does manage to sneak through as Lucian. Not something that DRX want to deal with and probably alluding to a Rumble priority. And ST1, you are basically expecting to Rumble. You can ban it here, but I don't think it's really a necessity. You can let them have the Rumble. Then. Ooh, Renekton's still up as well. Well, that's a good one, actually. That's probably going to be the final ban here. Um, although I personally don't feel like Renekton is as big a menace. It does have a good matchup into the set. Uh, and it will be the s real here. So it, the Renekton first pick is available, but then as T1, you're probably going to answer, yeah, with um, like the Rumble, Rumble set, set being available. And that's incredibly Ooh. strong. It's not great picking it into the Renekton. I get that. Yeah. But outside of lane, I think the set still has an incredible impact. And that combo is just 
horrifying to play into. Definitely very scary. Um, I'd hope to see that Arkaz is going to lock away the Rumble because he's been very good on the pick, uh, despite the results that T1 has put up. I know there's a lot of fans out there that aren't a huge, um, you know, advocate for Kuz at the moment, but I don't think that uh, T1's problems are too focused on any specific player, right? I think that they are just playing a little bit scared, playing not to lose, and we, what we need to see is some pizzazz out of this team, as it's going to be the Nocturne that takes precedent over the Rumble. And I could imagine DRX pretty happy with that situation. Pyosh is going to be hovering the poppy here. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks to Spirit, and it's making me very happy. As this would be a blast from the past, but yeah, probably that's... not going to happen. Just going to see some hovers here out of uh, Pyosh. It's a patch too early. Lilia looks a little bit better on 11 13 when uh, the um, mage items are buffed, but still not in the greatest of places. And with a Renekton, this should be absolutely no surprise. Nearly getting picked up here. And, well, DRX, you know, you're opting into an early, day, early game comp, which I Paris. am. Yeah, could be really, really good, especially yeah. with the Nidalee. Uh, does risk the Kanch and or Fresh being picked and bad. I would actually love a Fresh pick up here. Do you know why I knew that that was coming? Because this is exactly the same draft as our last series last night. Two games in a row. Interesting. And, uh, okay, this is very strange. So Diana being prioritized over the Rumble. In fact, no one picking the Rumble. I think this is the first time that Rumble's fallen through the draft entirely. And I find it very odd, personally. Maybe uh, just wanting, you know, Diana to have a uh, better time into the poke. Trying to cancel out the poke with a bit more dive. Get Set and Diana in there alongside the Nocturne. I think that that's the case. Uh, I think that while the Rumble is really, really strong, T1 clearly with this, to me, are saying, uh, okay, we, we have we have had our fair share of difficulties. As there we go to Kenchman, no surprises there. Yep. Um, we've had our fair share of difficulties with executing, and that is something that has been a consistent issue of ours. Even going back to spring, right, where they drafted these hard team, uh, like, poke, Jay Zoe compositions, and then kind of fail on how to pilot those properly. Just pick something simple. And set Nocturne Diana is as simple as it gets. You can still go a number of ways. You can go for the inevitable Kai'Sa Nautilus, uh, if that still is open. You can also say, okay, we don't want to go fully all in. Very happy with that fresh band to make sure that uh, Bao is going to not have the easiest time dealing with all the dive on the other end. Um, and you can still go for something like the Cog Lulu, right? Where he's just like, okay, you guys go in, and then I'll just stand in the back line before the time you buy me. I imagine it's probably Kaiser, though. Don't want to burst the so. bubble. Yeah. I like the Cogmore a no, little I, bit I more personally, but certainly feeling like a Kaiser time. Is Senna going to be banned away? Just going to try and take away from what could be a more powerful carrier, very similar to the Callista. In fact, both of those 80 carries are just there to buff up the support more than anything else. This carrier has decided that it is Leona time. Also one of those combos that works very well with the Varus. So denial as well as a priority pick that does work very well in dive compositions. Like this, Solar Flare's range is certainly going to be very valuable. All right, disengage. I actually really like this. Greg is fantastic into dive and engage, assuming that he can uh, play around the... Uh, oh, another option. Very yep. good into the engage. I'd like Gragas as well for the double disengage optimal situation. Honestly, if you... Janna Gragas? If you lock in... No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, I've been wanting to see a Janna pick for a while. And I, I know, right? I, I, I would love to, but I think that... If you go Chase here as well, right? Like King in on the top Chase, and then you have uh, Renekton, Nidalee on mid, you have a Varus, like the poke is incredible. This is a little bit more aggressive and provides you with more pressure. Um, and I do actually, I love the Brom. Uh, Brom has kind of been getting a resurgence with these super hard dive compositions being more and more popular. As surprise. We're not excited, but it also should not be a surprise. Um, some other options that you might look into, like I think Trist. the Kristana yep. is a possibility, but things like the, the, the Zaya, for example, into a DRX comp are just kind of horrible. I was, this is great, though. I like I mean, this. Jin might, yeah, it, it, it's okay. It doesn't make me excited, but it, it makes me more happy than a Kaisa would, because yep. I just feel like Kaisa has, uh, yeah, she just hasn't found the success that she really wants. I think that the win condition for these Kaisa comps is just a little bit too narrow and uh, hasn't been working thus far.
And we're not excited about the Jin, but Jin does have a way better matchup into Varus. Because how many times have we seen a Kai'Sa, especially into a Varus Brom lane, right? Well, Varus with the Halo Blades, the yep. threat of Winter's Bite. You know Carrier is not going to be able to actually all in, which is normally a win condition, into a lot of Varus lanes. Um, and that's why he's compared with the Kench and with the, with the Fresh, and in this case, the Brom. Uh, but with the Jin, you can safely lane, you can withstand a lot of the pressure, and post six. Uh, that combination of, you know, Faker jumping in, Koss finding the back line, and all Titan needs to do is just stand in the back and throw some shots with that curtain call. Yeah, so able to assist the dive without actually being there, which is, uh, which is fine because the Kaiser wants to dive in, and then sometimes you just get uh, punched by a Brom and then you die, and it doesn't feel great. Yeah. Uh, but this is, like, I actually quite like this composition. You know, it's got a fair bit of anti-dive with the fact that yeah. the, uh, the Brom exists, plus it has that poke around these objectives. Sort of everything peaking at similar times, things like that, feeling like one of these two item compositions. Uh, on the side of T1 though, certainly a very ease of execution style composition. Keep it simple, stupid, just dive on your opponent and kill them. And I like it. And it's a good look for T1. I want T1 to move away from the more hard attack screen position. And I think while the T1 comp can always win even when put behind, I think for DRX it's going to be a lot harder. This isn't really a comp you can afford to fall behind with because if the people on T1 get beefy and you get your Varus or you're nearly behind, you lose a lot of poke, you lose a lot of potent power. So these solo lanes need to go well for DRX. And I'm looking especially at that mid and bot lane. I think the Gwen and the Nidalee, not the greatest, um, but yep. Renekton needs an explanation and the same can be said for that Brom in the bot lane. Yeah, we're uh, kind of expecting that Faker is going to have some friends visit his lane uh, quite a few times. As oh, yes. Spear is going to sail past Kana majestically. They have avoided the Renekton set matchup, which uh, definitely bodes well. However, Gwen is going to have an okay time into the set anyway, so you're not r exactly uh, too worried about that one. Plus, Sulker on the Renekton in that mid lane up against the... Uh, the Nocturne isn't going to suffer at all. So I think that DRX, as far as the lanes are concerned, are probably pretty happy with how this one's going. That being said, on the T1 side, it's not all doom and gloom. Would not have minded an invade here from DRX when the Brahms level one is so incredibly oppressive. And t ones is also, it's not, a, it's not bad, but it's not amazing. You know, Leona really wants to hit level two. Diana level one is not too impressive as both junglers are going to start on opposite side of the map. Yep. And we talked a little bit about where Pioshik wants to play. I think that for him, um, going for a strong early clear into a possible mid play is great. If Kana actually does decide to play very proactively in that lane and shove it in, that can work as well. Whereas for Kuz, into the Brom, it's not amazing, um, but you uh, can always choose to try and make a play together with the Leona, and as Diana, you're also more than happy to just take it a little bit slower. I don't think either composition really needs to get stuff done in like the early, early game. Mel ranks level two. Uh, <laughs> um, Zinzel, Red, yeah. the top cheese gank comes to mind. Uh, but I do not want to see a situation that we've seen with both these teams for uh, a lot of times where it's just do nothing for like the first 10 15 minutes that's that's a no-no i don't want that that is way too much time being given over yeah no it is a big problem and both of these compositions are pretty proactive and both of these teams have been playing very scared and it does make sense they've been losing a lot right and as soon as you do that the confidence starts to slip away the expectations from your fans skyrocket and that uh the pressure is certainly something that mounts, so hopefully both T1 and DRX can play some proactive League of Legends as we can see Faker down relatively low here in this lane, relying on those Umbral Blades to get stuff done as the fear will go off. Just some Biffo, but Faker level 3. Pioshik is going to turn up, but it feels like Faker knows that there's something in the waters. Pioshik is going to back away. Yeah, Vinda Vision also see him hovering towards his bot side. Uh, we've seen these go very poorly, um, where the player is hovering, but then still walks up to the wave and then just gets yeah. CC'd and then dies. So nice respect there by Faker. Um, plays that very, very nicely. We constantly see there's some poke going down, but you never actually expect to have a lot of threat. Cuz also identifies that, like, there's nothing for me to do here. And as Diana, if you go even till, like, till level 6 uh, into a Nidalee, you'll be more than happy. Uh, Nidalee, of course, going to outpace you in terms of how fast he can clear the entire jungle, but we've seen a lot of set Diana's Atlas, and that combo is pretty good. 
also Diana does some pretty ludicrous stuff as the game goes on as well. We haven't yeah. been too impressed with uh, the amount of impact that Diana has early, but we also haven't been very impressed with uh, the amount of impact T1 has early, right? So you may as well play for more of these sort of mid-game, later game um, styles. And uh, hopefully the mid-game skirmishing is going to come out trumps here for T1, if you are indeed a T1 fan. As King and Kana, we're going to step in here towards the top side of the map and see how they're doing. Looks like Kana's stacking away for now, as uh, he's not going to be able to break King in's face. But that's all right. Not controlled this wave for the moment. As King and sitting on a lot of farm to pick up, so we'll have a slight advantage, I think, as this dust settles. And not really an opportunity to get a lot done. If you are both six here, maybe you can make a play on that flashless Gwen, but as it stands, not enough damage available. Um, also, no trading really being done as of yet. And we've also seen what Gwen can do, especially once you get her ultimate available. As you pointed out, this is a uh, good, I think, between 10 and 14 minions. So if King is able to pick up most of those, he will be in a great spot. Carrier being a good support. Yep, um, holding on to the wave. Very, very nice. And this might allow them to, uh, they do know there's a ward there because um, yep. Carrier got targeted. Can now go for the back, roam to mid and okay. or top, depending on what they're looking for. Um, go for a play there. And if that doesn't work out, as we do see him pathing towards mid, things also going down. Um, you can just uh, easy peasy go and set up a play for Drake. We'll see whether they do go for that. I imagine uh, in two and a half minutes' time there should be. So I know should be some action. <laughs> We're in the LCK, so it's a bit of a weird situation. As right now there's a bit of action, but Sulk is just going to get a little bit frightened and move away from Faker as once again. Baker is uh, well and truly on top of the situation. I believe there was a ward that was just cleared out by Joshik as well. Troll ward there. And uh, so therefore, Faker did get a heads up and isn't going to get caught out. And actually, it's been uh, pretty huge because Pioshik has wasted a bit of time. And that means that Kuz has been able to keep up and hasn't lost tempo in the jungle. So things have worked out here for T1 thus far when it comes to that jungle matchup. As, uh, yeah, Kuz is just able to continue that power farm while everybody else stays safe. And I wouldn't mind a uh, big stack. Ooh, Sorka. Don't think there's really an opportunity here with Kuz being level 5, but there he goes, Ding 6. Yeah, that's going to be the Dominus. As in goes the ulti. Paranoia comes down as Faker has to flash over, and Kuz holds on to the turret aggro beautifully. And Faker's just going to hop into the wolf house and go home. A very cleanly executed T1. I was a little bit worried there when I saw Faker go in, but it is Kuz that actually keeps his mid laner alive, recognizes, okay, yeah. he's going to go in on the Renekton. Need to make sure that he's fine as Pioshik looking for a counterplay on bot side. Yeah, Winter Spider's going to land there onto Teddy, who will have to flash immediately to get himself out of the way. Good respect to come through from the T1 AD carry. Might have been able to use Cleanse instead, but wanted to make sure that he got rid of as much distance as possible. Just frustrating to deal with the bomb when you have the Cleanse. We'll check this one out one more time. It's as clean as it gets, right? Um, Faker, yes, he gets stunned. Yes, he gets targeted, but Kaz recognizes I am full health. I have my shield available. Uses it specifically for the, to tank the turret shots. That um, replay flash, by the way, was very strange. Faker did actually move yeah. when he flashed. <laughs> that was just one of those visual bugs that we sometimes have, I'm pretty sure. Um, so just, uh, just in case you were wondering whether he flashed on the spot. Uh, Sulka in trouble yet again. No, but it's no, it's Faker as uh, I wasn't paying attention for a moment, and uh, the Nocturne's just dead, so the follow-up gank is good from Kyoshi. I feel like with these Renekton and Italy games, we get like one reminder every game where it's like, oh, ah, yeah, why, that's why this is picked. Now I get it. Yeah. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit, uh, little bit of time, um, and in this case, we're treated to it rather early. As we see Kaz passing towards bot side now, might be opportunity for T1. Like I said, I want to see those early drakes. I feel like T1 really need to reprioritize there as, yeah, Faker, um, Sorka waits out the spell shields, um, or proxy rather, and then um, goes in for the W. Also, he's dead. Yeah, and then uh, to be done there as Kana. Yep, Yoshi paying another visit. He's going to land the spear, and Kana is just dead. He knew it, that's why he didn't flash. Heads up play there, but still is going to go down. And DRX early game working out very, very well. Certainly playing like the team with nothing to lose. And that is exactly how they should be playing. And T1 now two times in a row, giving up a lot. Imminent collapse here on top of Pioshik. And they can't give up this Herald. I'm happy that T1 is contesting this, but they need to do it cleanly. Yep, teleport to come pretty far away from Kana. 
Perhaps he's going Ooh, to have to pick up leave. this wave first. Sulka moving on in. Over goes Becker, and we've got 80 carries on the bottom side. Teddy's rotating up first, but we don't know whether he'll be here in time as Shelly does reset. So it looks like DRX are going to give this one up by the looks of things with the fact that Bao is on the Teleport. All right, don't know whether this is the commitment that they really want with the fact that Teddy can just curtain call from the mid lane, but they will still go for it. Sulka standing on a ward right now as it is going to be T1 to lock down the Herald. Now they start off this fight as a face breaker. On to King and is good. They get him away from the wall and will be able to take him down for the second kill for T1. This is what we want to see. And now oh. it's a teleport immediately behind Bao. He's got no mana as well as the Dustbringer will connect. And this should just be pretty comfy. Yeah, Bao not going to be able to get towards so Soka. And that's a great map play from Faker as well, just to get even more from that play. And it's just really well done uh, by T1. They recognize that the RX they get the, are, are not really ready, as you pointed out. With Teddy's roam, just a curtain call adds a lot of pressure. And that's going to be your first turret, but. And this is exactly what the Doctor ordered for T1. Yeah. A healthy dose of early game. First turret block picked up by 10 minutes. Now hold on to that momentum. Don't get afraid if one of your plays doesn't work out. It's fine. Just don't get baited into inactivity. Well, there's the fear. Doesn't actually do too much, though, as Faker makes it underneath his turret. Dominus still running here, and Sulka is going to get the respect that he deserves, as Faker is just going to back away from this turret. Some plates going over to the crocodile. Certainly good news, but it looks like Pyoshik should be able to get towards the Drake on a reset of T1. And uh, this goes against kind of what you were talking about, Chronicler, with uh, a wish for T1 to put a little bit more priority on these uh, scaly lizard flying things. I still think I'll take it because, uh, honestly, just because of that mid bot or that bot side play rather from Faker, where he's able to pick up Bao, I think otherwise, at this point, that trade might not be fully worth it because. You gave up two plays on the bot side, um, as Bao wasn't obviously wasn't in that fight. As oh, I don't know how we're going back to this. That's uh, <laughs> we're a long time in the past yeah, right now. Um, not a lot to be done. Kana, um, as you pointed out, good heals the flash. Not anything to be done though. Top really. okay, top okay. And they get a really nice reset here. And no one there, no. is there. You always go for uh, this. Landing or pull, pull, pull. There's really no <laughs> thing <laughs> that the RX can reliably do, and I don't know. This is this yeah, is kind of the indecision that the RX have shown a lot, <laughs> and that they can't really afford to. If you can't as much dive and hard engage as this, right? You you yeah. know you're going to be down the guy. Just back off. Don't like they have the objective. Immediately recognize that. Back off. You're going to be in a much better spot. Well, we're looking at uh, Sulky getting dove here towards the bottom side of the map. Faker is going to be able to get out of turret range, and Becker. Not going to be enough to stop him as Cuz just takes the last possible turret shot that he can. And Faker is going to grab some crockery here from the bottom out of turret. I like it a lot. Kana now is the one that is uh, in the furnace, but it looks like Pyoshik not wanting to go for it and Kana giving as much respect over as possible as Pyoshik might find Teddy. Spear is going to connect and this should be the kill. Is Teddy able to flash his way up, but the follow flash is going to be there. Spear is going to miss as there's the captive audience, but it ain't going to be enough. Pounce. And take down, and Pyoshik is going to be able to get the assassination. Pyoshik's hit and run tactics are one of the very few things that are consistently working out for the RX here. Um, has 100% of the kills on his team. And even though I think this game is still looking pretty dire for the RX, with Sokka being behind on the Renekton, um, same can be said for Bao, even though Teddy got picked up uh, as a whole, I feel like he's uh, been getting a lot of gold in the plates, might even it out a little bit. Um, yep. But at least the side lane pressure is good, as we see King and uh, yet again show us why Gwen is just a, a fun champion that you can't really play into as uh, yeah. anyone really at any point in the game. Fun and interactive League of Legends, because yes. of Gwen there towards the top side of the map. Very much like it, as Sulker is going to be inside the turret, which is uh, another visual bug. Getting a couple of those, which is a lot of fun. But uh, this is just T1, another pretty good dive. And this is Teddy getting caught out of position. Yeah, no vision on the top side. Pioshik at that point had already uh, cleared, looked around, and uh, Teddy also. Not really anything that he could do there. I think the flash, uh, if you know that the Nidlius flash should never be used there, because um, that's just no way, right? Like with the movement speed and with the execute that she has available, no help in the general vicinity. Um, just not amazing, but it's not the end of the world for T1, and that's the big thing here and a big difference with T1 thus far. 
that happens, which is unfortunate. But at the same time, they're making a cross map play, right? They set up the dive, they pick up the turret. Now the two outers are gone. There's only the mid lane turret. And for now, this is looking like a much more proactive T1. Yeah. And that's good. That's that's. I was afraid that we we're going to see the same kind of apathy that has really plagued them. And so far, none of that. But they've also haven't really hit a snag in the road, so still a little bit apprehensive. Whereas DRX, I'm just happy to see that individually these players look a little better. I think they still have some of the same issues, which is more the macro, you know, walking up to the objective when you shouldn't. But individually, um, it does also not look good. And it's a fancy feat there from the Diana. I liked it a it's lot. It's nice. It's a good, good little proto bell. Himself out of the way, the Grump is secured there by Kanner, and it feels like T1 are continuing to keep that pressure up pretty effectively. So far, passing the test, like you were saying, but still, there is a lot of the test to go. You know? This is a, it's an exam that lasts quite some time, maybe not as long as their one against Nongshim, which was, of course, Ooh. our seventh longest game in the LCK of all time. You had to bring it up. Well, we, we had to, right? They, they certainly did like to play some slow and steady League of Legends, but unfortunately, it was steadily towards a loss, which ain't exactly what you want, as we are getting a lot of items on the screen to the right there. There's some very strange things happening right now as far as our graphics are concerned, but I'm having a good time uh, having a look at all of the pop-ups. Or the one item spice and hit across the board. Only King is a little bit behind, but we'll hit that. I was shortly on the item spikes. The item spikes happened all at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with left side as well, it was like three plated steel caps and a Primus yeah. Claw, I think. I like how excited we got for the plated steel caps as well. That's definitely good. Maybe it was like one of those uh, two for the price of one deals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it all at the Korean convenience stores. Yeah. They do very much like those multi-buy offers. It would it would be great, you know, if that's like kind of a random rotating thing where sometimes <laughs> items are just cheaper and it would influence drafts. Yeah, I think that that would definitely help balance. I, I, um. We're not talking about balance. We're talking about fun here, Atlas. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. Well, Teddy going to get snagged there by the piercing arrow. Need to make sure as many of those land there from Bao. Of course, this was our key matchup. Which is an uh, interesting thought to be had, right? Um, but that's just uh, that's just where it is. I think Pyoshik versus Kuz is another big one. Of course, uh, both of them uh, having worn the DRX jersey before. As Faker moves down here towards the bottom side, they will lose that turret, but he should be able to catch that wave. As DRX looking to pick up another dragon for free. I just don't know about this anti-dragon playstyle that T1 has. This one I'm still moderately on board with, although also not really. Uh, if they give up the next one, I am getting incredible. Like I, I am, I am very unhappy again. And I'm not. I'm, it's pretty hard to make me unhappy, you know. Generally, I'm. I'm yeah, a, you're I'm, a pretty happy-go-lucky uh, guy. I, I am uh, able to find. Uh, the positives in many a situation, but I do not want to see T1 give over Soul Point. Uh, Soul Point has been something that we've been outspoken about because it feels like one out of like two free games is still setting up playing King in here, but he should be fine with his uh, Ignan old available. Um, yep. Where it's like, oh, the game is looking great, and then uh, you give up Soul Point, but it's fine, we get Baron, and then you push, and then you lose, and then they get Soul, and they're like, wait. We've seen it happen many times So before. many times, and I don't want it anymore. I don't no. need that kind of negativity in my life, you know? No, we don't want that. We absolutely don't. That's a two-point special once again uh, in the mid lane <laughs> with that piercing arrow. like that one a lot. Steady and Carrier getting chunked just a little bit. We managed to avoid the next one, but DRX just will take care of this lane. As uh, the poke not quite connecting. Looks like Teddy and Carrier should be okay, just uh, keeping things in order. Faker pushes out the bottom wave towards that inner turret completely. Sokka doing the same thing, or attempting to, on the top side. And as if just general uh, souls being strong enough wasn't uh, enough of an incentive for T1 to uh, try and play more corrective throughout the next dragon, it's an Infernal Drake. And you can look at the DRX come and go, ah, oh, it's Renekton, you know, it's Lethality Varus, it's, it's in Italy. I can assure you, if the champions get an Infernal Soul, uh, yeah. that poke is just going to be always relevant, no matter the situation, and it's going to make T1 life infinitely harder, because while they have Kana, they don't have a tank in the traditional sense, they don't have someone who can reliably eat these spares and be fine, um, and of course the arrows from Bao are always going to be a nuisance, uh, whether or not you have someone to tank them. So T1, it's fine to give up this Drake, but we keep going back to it because it's such an important part of the current mana. 
Uh, we've seen how powerful these souls can be, and now the side lane. Fred Brion yesterday, right? If you yes. got a monopoly on the dragons, you win. That's what happened. Dragon Always Slayer on C. Yeah. Brings a tear to your eye. It really does. Much like Umtis. Aww. Last night, of course, man has a lot of pressure on him. Doing very, very well. If you missed that series, um, certainly a very likable team. Good old Fred Brion. And let's hope that uh, T1's going to take a leaf out of their book and start trying to kill some of these dragons. Because so far, it has been all about DRX on that front. I feel a little bit tricked. I was uh, treated to a lot of action across map plays early on here. Yeah, things were working, now, uh, weren't they? And now we're, we're taking a bit of a timeout. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a bit of a lunch break right now as far as the action <laughs> is concerned. Taking it easy. Yep. Uh, did we once again break the uh, overlay towards the top? Um, yeah. It's interesting. I wonder when that happened. I wasn't actually I paying too much attention. It was around the Drake. I think there was some issues with that. Anticipating another 70 minute game, I guess, because that was the last time I saw that break. Oh no. As, uh, <laughs> yep, Shirley going to hop on into the mid lane. She'll be able to take a big chunk out of this turret, but otherwise, not too much happening. Gwen just shoving there towards the bottom side, playing some of that 1 uh, 3 1 or 1 4 style of, uh, of play here. As Faker will catch that wave and hope that Gwen doesn't do too much uh, damage, and she won't. Not going to be able to do too much extra there because, of course, Teddy and Carrier rotating over. Some vision there towards the top side of the map for T1, but it's all pretty defensive. And we don't like defensive. We want a little bit more action. We want a little bit more doing stuff. T1 had some really good tempo and momentum earlier on, and uh, that has ceased, uh, since dissipated. And, uh, yeah, we're playing, playing some ping pong. Where's you, you were in waves. Did you, did, you, uh, did you have a table tennis table um, as a child or anything like that? Play some um, ping pong well, no, not myself, not myself, but uh, I had one friend who did, and it was also a, a popular camping pastime, you know? All the kids playing around the table, running around playing. Camping and playing ping pong? I've yeah. Never, I've never, I've never been to like a place where I could camp popular and play ping pong. That's cool. Unlike, uh, on, on, um, like in a caravan French, park French, or something French, like that? No, French campings, right? So you like you set up your tent and then you go to the communal area and there's, there's ping pong tables everywhere. Uh, and cool. um, uh, Patonk, which is like, you know the game where you throw iron balls and then you need to get it to the small... Oh, we call it bocce. Ball? Oh, I haven't heard that one, but that's probably or exactly the balls. same game. Yeah. But, Atlas, you know what is about to spawn here soon. Is it the... It's action. The oh, action's going to be spawning. Yes, it's the action, Drake. The fire action. <laughs> Hopefully. Well, it is uh, currently Teddy just chilling in that mid lane, trying to catch this minion wave that's heading on forward. And it looks like DRX don't want to wait for the Drake. As, uh, okay, Cuz just going to engage onto King. And some needlework comes down as Kana looking for it. Does manage to get in there as Faker. There to follow up. And Teddy dashing on forward, able to get these autos working. Bow's already dead. Sulk has been taken down. And this is the T1 we've been looking for. There's the curtains, and my goodness, Teddy is angry after these last few games. That's going to be the long range as he takes down King, and the Drake is going to follow suit. And T1, see what else they can get now after almost an ace. We gave T1 a little bit of flack. Cuz has heard it, Atlas, and he desires, uh, decides rather, to dive right in as. That is some incredibly, incredibly dominant play coming from T1, and exactly what we want. This kind of composition cannot afford to sit back and just wait and do nothing. It took a while, but they recognized their window. They recognized, okay, we can't give up this Drake, not again. And uh, DRX, unfortunately, uh, when that engage actually comes through, you need to be very, very ready for it. You need to be able to kite back reliably, and it's really cause that starts this off, because it feels counterintuitive to engage this hard. Um, on the uh, Gwen, but it opens her up to not really being in the fight, right? And that creates so much space for the rest of T1, who use their several ultimates to go in incredibly deep. Um, Kana in particular just uses uh, one of the DRX members as a nice way into the team fight. And while all of that was happening, Teddy wasn't even uh, touched, not even remotely. Also had already finished a Lord Dominic second there. And while it isn't, I don't think it's a super general item to go second um, on Jin. I really like it because you know that DRX is just going to itemize for armor, right? Because the only AP source is Diana. Not yeah. going to itemize for that. You're playing into Set and Nocturne. And um, it makes Jin a little bit less bad at getting through these beefy boys. I like it a lot. 
I also really loved that I saw the deadly flourish coming down. I'm like, oh, Teddy's a little bit far away. He's not really going to be able to do too much. And then I see him from the top of the screen, Gale forcing in to just annihilate everyone. And that's what we want to see here from T1 and, uh, and from Teddy as well after, you know, kind of throwing his life away earlier on. And uh, afterwards, just uh, sniping everyone down towards the end of that team fight. Really great to watch. So T1 in a really good spot right now. Currently about 4,000 gold in the lead. A little bit under that. But uh, 8 to 3 as far as the kill score is certainly uh, what we want to see. And Teddy starting to do a lot of damage. That is uh, Gale Force plus the Rapid Fire yeah. Cannon. <laughs> and the Lord Dominix, he is, uh, he's got a lot of damages. Yeah. He just finished another one. Uh, as if uh, two items wasn't enough. He's like, well, I got a bunch of kills. Yeah. I am now incredibly fed. And ST1, need to be a little bit mindful, okay? Uh, even though the Hardening Age is an agent, it's paranoia. Teleports come in from King in to try and defend this in a turret. Is going to do so, but getting that teleport off both of the solo laners is very important. The last, uh, last teleport from Solka was towards the Baron because, of course, no vision available for DRX as in goes Faker. Solar Flare doesn't find too much joy as there is the Chains of Corruption. Solka trying to get on forward, but there's no follow-up. And now, Solka going to get stunned up. The Deadly Flourish doing work as Becca. Okay, you got to keep that door up in front of your crocodile, but he is going to be okay for the moment. Last bullet not going to be enough, as Teddy says. Yeah, my fourth bullet, though. That one hurts. All right, T1 just back away. Looks like some resets to come in as we have Kana finishing off his Sterics. And it's the amount of restraint we haven't really seen from T1. Um, I, I want to say in the entirety of Summer,